will be more crowded if you're going to your to the bodega. <laughs> Casual things. Hello cuties. We are currently on a trek to go to the Bedsai Aquarium. If you don't know what the Bedsai Aquarium is, you'll, you're about to find out. It's a cultural landmark as Google Maps describes it. And as TikTok would show, it holds a lot of significance and relevance to this neighborhood. We're walking there. I'm gonna show you guys what the deal is before it gets way too cold out. Oh, I stopped recording, but did you guys see that? Did you guys see that? I wants to be involved in the vlog so bad. No. So bad. He wasn't gonna be involved, but now he is. I might have taken this shirt from his closet. Mm -hmm. Got a long skirt moment. Because even though it's fall, 
It's high 70s. I'm seeing a lot of decorations, I'm seeing a lot of spider webs, spiders, skellies, all of the above. Oh, this, this is the spookiest one we've seen so far. Spookiest one we've seen so far. expectations friends I last minute decided to come to the New York Nico book signing it's like Monday night it's 6 30 it's already pitch black now I could have just stayed in bed but I was like you know I feel like I'm gonna regret this moment if I don't go so I'm gonna take you guys with me I moved back to New York and was living with my parents and I just felt super defeated, you know, I was like, I didn't make it as a music video director. That's all I thought, I th thought that was going to be my life. So one day I was sitting in, in Union Square Park, sort of contemplating what I was going to do next. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed this street character who I'd seen all throughout high school. He was this six foot seven white guy. <laughs> Hi friends, I decided to get out of bed today. Even though it gets dark at 6 o'clock now and daylight savings hasn't even started. And go to the New York Nico book signing today at Greenlight Bookstore. If you haven't been there yet, it's in Fort Greene in Brooklyn. It's so cute. It's such a great bookstore. And I'm so glad that he had a book signing there because he had a party recently that I guess was like so packed that was on the wait list. And I didn't think I was going to be able to get my book signed or like whatever. Um, so I'm glad I found this and that I ended up deciding to come because it was such a cool experience. I love being a part of some of these New York staple memories because I feel like a lot of the times we look back at, I don't know, like New York in like the 70s, 80s, whatever it may be, throughout the different decades, I feel like there were some like prominent characters that dominated kind of the space, whether it was the art space, mostly like what I look at is like the creative space, the art space. And you're always like, damn, I wish I would have like known what it felt like to be there and like meet them and be a part of that. So I feel like we have to like look at like the now and like the people that are doing, you know, those things right now in the 2020s, which might not seem like a lot, but there there's some like very prominent figures. And I feel like New York Nico is one of them for sure. And um, I'm really excited that he came out with the book. I've been following him on Instagram for years now, and I have been using his Instagram as like a guide um, in a lot of ways to places, especially like mom and pop shops, local businesses. I've met like so many like cute and wonderful people just literally based off of his recommendations. So having like a whole guide to like 100 best places, he has it separated by boroughs. I'll show you guys a little bit um, better later, but it's 100 places. He says he might do like different volumes of everything. So that's gonna be really cool to continue on the journey. I really like the cover art. I feel like it's just something that it's gonna represent my time here, apart from like my digital footprint of me making these videos and showcasing them to you guys. It means a lot to me. And <laughs> I was kind of like, I was, I'm usually like introverted when it comes to meeting people and all that stuff like even though i'm on youtube and i've like kind of gained the, the i guess like the stamina and the practice and everything to be able to talk to youtube and people think that i'm like a really extroverted person i kind of do word vomit sometimes but i do get really nervous when i meet people that i followed for a while or like whether it's influencers or artists or content creators or whatever it may be i do get nervous but especially this person because i was just like ah and knowing that he's also like introverted and everything i was just like oh my god but it helped that um the writer of the book jason diamond helped them write it he was there too signing and then they have like a photographer and artist all that stuff so there was like a couple people there so that kind of helped but it was so hard to like in such like a short conversation when you're just doing a book signing it's so hard to like get everything out that you want to say 
I was I was glad that I was able to tell him that I met the Green Lady of Brooklyn because of him. You know, I got to know who she even was because of his page. And, you know, getting to meet her at like a plant exchange, getting to go to um, Village Revival Records because of his recommendations. And yeah, there's actually one place in here that's in my neighborhood. It's called Cuts and Slices. And now I definitely want to go check it out. I've been like saying I've been wanting to check it out, but I just like haven't gone. There's so many like businesses they're basically like each one is like a page like this it explains the story behind the business and there's from food spots to specialty stores to just i don't know everything that i feel like places that are going to be like encapsulated um forever so hopefully this helps them stay open longer i know one of the issues was uh during the pandemic a lot of these places were on the verge of closing and he was like a major major help for a lot of them because of his big following um just posting their places and just letting them know like hey guys go support and make sure that they don't close down because this is such a staple to the community so yeah i just know that like I did the book signing and i know i just word vomited like i just know i did because i didn't know I had, I had so much to say but i didn't know how to organize it and i was kind of hoping that they would like go on with the conversation which they did but also there were some quiet moments and i'm like i can't just sit here and be quiet but i got to tell them i'm colorful carol i make art and all that stuff and and that's the yard for you i don't know where this train is i'm trying to get back home totally lost my train of thought but oh yeah i do want to like create like some sort of post as long as much as i wish i could be in new york city forever i just don't think it's gonna happen i don't think i'm gonna be here forever so i do want to eventually create like an encapsulated moment like a post of like all like the awesome people i got to meet here and yeah kind of cherish those memories forever this is definitely gonna be one of them I just got out of the gym and I had to come sit in my car just to be outside for a little bit. I know I look a hot mess, but this spooky season has just not hit the same as other like spooky seasons, other like Halloween weeks. I'm really just trying to keep it together and, you know, really just enjoy the, the season for what it is. But this election cycle has me like really stressed out. By the time you see this, we'll know who the winner is, and I am definitely nervous. I voted yesterday. I didn't vlog. I posted a couple things on TikTok and Instagram about how I feel. I made a highlight reel on Instagram if you want to go check it out. I'm probably not going to like fully dive deep into that. Um, if you've been following me on social media for a while, or if you don't know who I am and haven't been following me, I became a U.S. citizen in like 2018. I've been living in the U.S. since I was five. I grew up in the USA, but I'm originally Colombian. And there's just a lot of feelings that I have towards um, a lot of the hatred that's been spewed onto, you know, Latin people, brown people in general, um, people that basically are not white, people of color, women, just marginalized groups in general, you know, LGBTQ. And I just always feel like I since i was a kid i've always felt like i had to make it a point to prove that we're good people and obviously like the very very few crimes committed by undocumented um immigrants a year you know i don't condone any of that but just the way they make it seem like we're less than humans is completely just unacceptable and um I've, i'm just so happy that i can finally you know since 2018 like i said i voted in the 2020 election i'm voting in this election i'm glad to finally be able to use that right because not a lot of countries have that right and i just feel like it's so important and it just really stresses me out when people don't see the importance of it and even less even more because like obviously not voting sucks but i get that it's not always like our fault sometimes we want to but each state has their own laws it's confusing if it was all just all around actually united and we had just you know just one thing where it was like okay 
registration is open till November 5th. You can vote a week early. You have early voting, you know, there's absentee ballots, whatever it may be. But like if every state could get together and like actually do what's right, that would be amazing. But that's just not the case because they know that if they make it easier for people to vote, the turnout will be a lot higher and they don't want that they want the turnout to be really low they want people not to care they want people to ignore it but obviously in this age of social media we're not going to ignore it we're gonna fight for what's right and i'm i'm speaking to you on october 30th it's the day before halloween um my birthday is on halloween actually my birthday's tomorrow and for my birthday i would really really like democracy to keep being a thing that would be great um considering one of the candidates loves dictators loves dictatorship <sighs> loves making us doubt that democracy is the right thing likes calling out that elections are stolen etc etc that's just not the case our system is not perfect but it works and has always worked so we're gonna keep it that way um if anything we can always improve it but yeah it's just it's really gotten to me just on social media seeing people i know and mind you again this has been going on for nine plus years almost a decade now you know since the 2016 election and way before that for other reasons but just like this specific thing um this specific person and in 2016, like, I feel like it was kind of like a weird time because everyone was like, you know, in this, like, it felt like a, a happier place. I could be wrong, but it felt like at least my generation, we were a lot happier, like, back then. Like, it just, I don't know. It might just be because we were younger, whatever, but it just felt like more pure and wholesome. So when that happened, it came as a complete shock because I don't think anybody expected that to happen but i kind of like at first i was really angry at people that made it happen blah 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 and i still kind of am you know obviously but like throughout the years you would think that like a lot of us have like realized have come to terms with like oh wow this is bad like this is not good but the fact that in 2024 there are still people just supporting this behavior you know it's it's you're basically just shoving it in your face that you hate marginalized people you know and i'm not okay with that i'll never be okay with that it, it really grinds my gears and it makes me want to unfollow certain people that i've been close with in the past which kind of sucks because I feel like growing up, I knew that, you know, some people's parents were Republicans, some people's parents were Democrats and blah, blah, blah. But we all kind of got along. You know, if there was differences in religion or thoughts or everything, we kind of just like agreed to disagree. But like this feels not like an agree to disagree. This feels like it's either you are literally voting for the party that isn't perfect, but at least wants to try, you know, to be normal, to at least like give us some peace of mind or the party that are insane and that, that's the only way i can describe it like it's 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 insanity like and uh, we just can't do another four years of this like I, I like we're already in a happiness deficit like this this would really just send us to i don't even know i'm just i can't do it like emotionally i can't do it like but I just wanted to vent to the vlog because that's part of, that's honestly been like the spookiest, scariest part of spooky season has been this election cycle. And I'm aware that that's probably why my vlogs and my content hasn't been doing as well as last year. It's just, it's, I think it's kind of hard for people to really focus on like the cute stuff when all this is going on. But I definitely needed to let you guys know as well how I feel. And I'm hoping. I'm hoping for good results. It's not, it's not they're both bad. Like, it's just like, come on, come on, guys. Like, please. I know we're in different alternate realities, but my God. <laughs> and I'm glad I'm saying this, even like a sweaty mess. I just put some oil in my hair. Um, I do rosemary oil right before I, I do like really like good wash days to get my hair to grow thicker. <sighs> I'm going to take a nice long shower and just get ready for my birthday week. <laughs> I have five days off in a row. 
I don't have any crazy big trip. I don't have any crazy big plans. I'm just going to take it day by day, see what happens. I don't want to put too much pressure, especially with, like I mentioned, a lot of people are probably feeling like not great this week. Um, but I love you cuties. And well, I'm going to keep creating vlogs. I'm going to keep making vlogs and posting them even if they're not getting a lot of views. Um, I still just like sharing my thoughts and long form content. I just can't do that on the other apps. So 